Okay, so once you have your ear sewed on the way you like it, then I usually tie the knot in the back. So I just grab a stitch and then I like to tie twice, make it a secure knot. And then once you tie your knot, just take your yarn end and then bury it within the ear itself. And then you can cut that loose yarn end. Now you can just make sure you have the ear in place and stuffed the head stuffed the way you like it. And you can add more stuffing if you need to, but I think I have enough stuffing in there. So now we're going to work on the body. Okay, so for the body, we're going to start with the white color. And you can go ahead and drape. We're going to do a magic circle. Drape the yarn across your four fingers and then stabilize it with your thumb. And then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and hold it in place with your thumb and your pinky. And I'm still using my um, G hook or four millimeter crochet hook and just go under those two loops and then you're going to bring up a loop and then you're going to yarn over and go through that loop for your slip knot and now you're going to do six single crochet into the magic circle one two three four five and six and then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb and you're going to grab the base of the six single crochet and you again you have the two loops on the opposite side you're going to close the magic circle don't pull it too tight and then grab the excess yarn and pull that and now we're going to do two single crochet into every stitch around so in the next stitch you're going to do two single crochet in the same stitch. One, two. So go ahead and finish doing the two single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 12, and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now we're just going to close the little opening in the middle of the magic circle. You can just turn over your work and just pull on that loose yarn end, and then that closes up the circle nicely. And then you're just going to get a yarn marker. I'm just going to use one of my scraps of yarn. Just put it where you left off and we're going to do increase rounds. So for the first increase round you're going to go into the first stitch and do one single crochet. And in the second stitch you're going to do two single crochet in the same stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now you're just going to take your yarn marker and move it up, and we're going to do the next increase round. So you're going to go into the next stitch and do one single crochet, and in the second stitch, one single crochet, and then in the third stitch, you're going to do two single crochet in the same stitch, one, two. Go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Okay, we're going to do our last increase round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up. And you're going to do one single crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, three. And then you're going to do two single crochet in the fourth stitch. One and two. And go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Okay, so now you're going to go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you're going to do one single crochet into every stitch around. So you're going to go into the next stitch, and you're going to do one single crochet, and you're going to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. Okay, so now we're going to add the color to the body. So let me just show you what it's going to look like. So on licorice, you can see this is the body here that we've worked on and now I'm going to show you how to add the color on the body so the white portion
will be under the belly of your dog. And what's nice about this is you can move your color wherever you like on the body. But I'm just going to show you how to do it like this. So now you're going to go ahead and go into the next stitch with your hook. And you're going to bring up a loop. And you have two loops on your hook. And you're going to go ahead and bring in your second color. And you're just going to grab the yarn and then bring it through both loops. And then you're going to do a single crochet. So just yarn over and go through that loop. And then turn your work. And you're going to tie a knot with the white color and your new color. And then we're going to take the white and then put it in front. And then you're going to go into the next stitch with your new color. Put your hook into the next stitch and bring up a loop with your new color. You have two loops on your hook. I'm going to yarn over and go through both loops. Oop. Let me do that again. So into the next stitch and then make sure that your white color is in the front. And then bring up a loop and then yarn over and go through both loops for a single crochet. And you can see how your white strand of yarn, you're going to carry that with you as you work. So now you're going to go into the next stitch behind that white yarn. Bring up a loop with your new color. Two loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through both for your second. And then we're going to do two more with the new color. So you go into the next stitch. Do a single crochet. And then in the last stitch, the fourth stitch, another single crochet. And then we're going to switch back to the white color. So you're going to bring the, the new color yarn into the front and then you're going to go into the next stitch and then grab hold of the white color and bring up a loop. Yarn over and go through both for a single crochet and then we're going to do that for 10 stitches. Two. Three. You can see how I'm carrying the blue yarn with me. Four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. And like I said, that's just the way that I'm doing it. If you want to do the color differently, that's you can do that as well. Whatever you want to do, you can make yours unique if you want, or you can just follow the same way that I'm doing it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the white yarn forward and then take and work with the blue yarn. So I'm going to go into the next stitch. I'm going to pull up a loop with the colored yarn. Yarn over and go through both. Now I'm going to start working with the blue. And I'm going to work one single crochet with the blue yarn and carry the white yarn with me all the way back to the yarn marker. So go ahead and do that and come back and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I'm back to the yarn marker. I'm going to go ahead and do one more color with the blue and then I'm going to go ahead and move up the yarn marker and then I'm going to keep doing the blue color until I get to right before the white color 
keep doing single crochets and carrying the white yarn and so here you have one stitch of blue right before you change colors to the white I'm going to go ahead and change colors now to the white so I'm going to go ahead and bring the blue colored yarn forward I'm going to go into the next stitch and bring up a loop with the white yarn then yarn over and go through both for a single crochet and then I'm just going to do single crochets with the white yarn and then I'm going to work white the white color all the way until the last stitch of the white color and then I'm going to do a blue color into that last stitch before I change back so you can go ahead and do this pattern all the way back to the yarn marker where you move a white stitch right before the white change and then the last white stitch you do a blue stitch into that stitch before you go all the way back to the yarn marker and you're going to do that for 16 rows alternating between the two colors and then come back and I'll show you what to do next okay so here you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. So now I'm going to taper off the white portion for the rest of the um, rows until I only have the blue color. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this round. with the one single crochet of the blue all the way back to the yarn marker and then come back and then I'll show you how to finish off the 16 rows okay so here I have one two three four five six seven eight nine rows I'm gonna go ahead and move up the yarn marker and now I'm gonna taper off the white colored portion So I'm going to keep doing the blue color and then I'm just going to put in a few of the white portion Okay, and I did about, I'll do one more stitch, about five stitches of the white single crochet. Now I'm going to switch back to the blue. And then go ahead and finish the blue all the way around back to the yarn marker. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. Though this is going to be the underbelly. And now we're going to go ahead and get rid of the white portion of the yarn. And then you can go ahead and tie a knot. And then you're going to go ahead and finish doing six more rows for a total of 16 rows of just the blue colored yarn all the way around and then come back okay so this is how your body should look and now we're going to start doing the decrease rounds so go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up and now you're going to do one single crochet into the next stitch and then you're going to do a decrease in the next stitch so you're going to go into the next stitch you're going to bring up a loop and then you're going to go into the next stitch and bring up a loop so you have three loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and go through all three for a decrease and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way back to the yarn marker and then come back okay so now 
go ahead and stuff your body with some um, pillow stuffing. And then we're going to go ahead and decrease until it's closed. So you're going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all three for a decrease. And you're going to do that all the way around until you're almost closed and then come back and I'll show you how to finish closing Okay, it. so I'm getting close to having it clo closed all the way. So I'm going to keep doing my decreases. And then when it gets too difficult to do the decrease, you can go skip a stitch, go to the stitch across, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're just going to slip stitch it closed. And then when you're finished slip stitching everything closed, go ahead and finish off. You're going to yarn over and bring enough yarn to bury into your work. And then take your tapestry needle and take that loose yarn end and then you just bury it into your work and then just cut it off and then you have the body. So now I'm going to show you how to sew the head onto the body. Go ahead and get the head and then some blue yarn so we can sew the head on. Okay, so now you're just going to line up the head and just make sure that the head is in line with the front of the body. And you're just going to take your tapestry needle and then you can start in the head and then go into the body. Oop, hit the camera. And leave enough to where you have um, enough to bury into your work and then go ahead and tie a knot and then you're just going to take and sew the head onto the body and if you're on the body then you're going to go into the body back in with your tapestry needle and then you're going to come up through the head. And then just keep making sure that the body is in line with the head. And then if you're in the head with the yarn, you're going to go back into the head with your tapestry needle and then go down into the body. And just make sure that the head is straight as you go down and you can go across too on the body with your tapestry needle. Just make sure that the head is facing straight and then you just keep sewing around. until the head is sewn onto the body and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, and then once the head is sewn on the way you like it, I usually will come out with my tapestry needle on the side that I had the loose yarn ends and then you can go ahead and tie a knot. And then once you tie a knot, you just take your loose yarn ends and then you're going to bury them into your work. And then go ahead and cut the loose yarn end. So go ahead and bury all of your loose yarn ends and then come back and then I'll show you how to make the feet. Okay, so now we're going to make the feet and the feet are all going to be made the same way. The only changes are going to be where you place the color on the feet. So I'm just going to show you on licorice. So you can see licorice, how the paws look and then the color is on the side, on both sides. 
and then the back legs has mostly color and you can change and alternate where you would like the color to be if you want mostly black in the front or um, whatever splotches of white that you want you can play around with that and make yours unique so I'm going to show you I'm going to make one of the front legs and I'm going to make the legs on um, the same as I did for licorice for the blue one so and I'm naming the blue one blueberry so blueberry is going to have the same coloring structure as licorice does so we're going to start with a um, magic circle so you're going to drape the yarn across your four fingers and then just stabilize with your thumb and then just wrap around your two middle fingers twice and then hold in place with your pinky and your thumb and you're still using your G hook or four millimeter crochet hook and you're going to go under and bring up a loop and then you're going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through that loop that's your slip knot. Now we're going to do six single crochet into the magic circle. So we're going to bring up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over and go through both loops for one single crochet, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you're just going to take your forefinger and thumb, you're going to hold at the base of the six single crochet and then you're going to pull on the yarn on the opposite end, not too tight, just enough to close the circle enough and then take the shorter yarn in and pull on that. And now you're going to do two single crochet into every stitch around. So in that first stitch, you're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet, and you're going to do two single crochet in every stitch all the way around for a total of 12, and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now we're going to make sure that the center of the magic circle is closed tightly, so just take on the back and pull on that yarn loose yarn in to pull it closed and now you're going to do an increase round so go ahead and take your yarn marker put it where you left off and you're going to do one single crochet into the next stitch and then in the second stitch you're going to do two single crochet into the same stitch one two you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you the stitch. So you can see the stitch and this is the back loop and this is the front loop. So we're going to be working into the back loop only. So we're going to be going into the center of the stitch and then working into that back loop back here. Okay. So for the next nine stitches, you're going to be doing a single crochet into the back loop only. So we're going to go right in the center of the stitch into the back loop. You're going to bring up a loop. And then you're going to yarn over and go through both for one single crochet. Back loop. Bring up a loop. Two single crochet. I'm going to do one more with you. Back loop bring up a loop, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. So I did three, you're going to finish nine total and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so you should have finished nine in the back loop only and now you're going to use both loops to do a single crochet. So bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet and then in the next stitch, same thing, you're going to go through both loops going to bring up a loop, yarn over and go through both. So finish doing single crochets all the way back to the yarn marker and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now you're going to take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off and you're going to do one single crochet around. So in each stitch, both loops, you're going to do a single crochet 
You're going to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up and now we're going to do a decrease round. So what you're going to do is in the first stitch you're going to do one single crochet, second stitch, one single crochet, and the third stitch, one single crochet. And then in the fourth stitch, you're going to do a decrease. So you're going to go into the next stitch. You're going to bring up a loop, two loops on your hook, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all three for a decrease. So go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I had three stitches left until I get back to the yarn marker. I've already done a single crochet in one. and I'm just going to do a single crochet in the rest of them until I reach the yarn marker. And now you're just going to move the yarn marker up to where you left off. And then you're going to do one single crochet in every stitch around for two rows. So just one single crochet into every stitch back to the yarn marker for two rows and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so you should have finished the two rows of single crochet and now we're going to sew the little paw prints into the four paw. So you're going to get your black yarn, I mean your blue or whatever color you're doing. In my case it would be the darker yarn. Um, I'm still going to use the black instead of the blue. So I'm going to use the black yarn to make the toes on blueberry as well. So go ahead and get your black yarn and the tapestry needle and then I'll show you how to do okay, that. Okay, so you're going to kind of shape your paw. And you can see the little bit of the ridge that we created at the bottom. So you're going to take your tapestry needle with the black yarn and you're going to go to the right above that ridge with your tapestry needle and just leave enough yarn on the inside to tie your knot and then you're going to go up two stitches one, two, straight above and then go in to the forefoot and then you have one little toenail and then I skipped two spaces one two and then I'm going to come out right here right above the ridge And then I'm going to go straight up, skip two, one, two, straight up. And then the last one, skip two stitches again, and then come out on that same row. And then one, two, straight up. And then you're going to go ahead and tie a knot on the inside. And so for all four feet, you're going to do this portion of the paw the same way. So go ahead and tie your knot and then cut the black strands and then come back and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now that you've sewn your paws on, you're going to go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off. And now we're going to go ahead and join the black yarn. So you're going to go ahead and go into that next stitch. And you're going to go ahead and pull up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. You're going to go ahead and get your other color. and go ahead and hook it and bring it through both loops 
and then you're going to do one single crochet. So you're going to go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for one. And then you're going to go ahead and tie your knot. Okay, and then for this foot, I'm going to be doing white still because I want the colored portion to go on the left side here. So I want the colored portion to be over here. So I'm going to do white around. So you're going to lay the blue color yarn in the front and in that next stitch you're going to bring up a loop with the white yarn. Then you have a white loop and a blue loop on your hook. You're going to yarn over and then go through both for a single crochet. And then you're just going to work around the little foot doing single crochet and burying the, the blue yarn or the dark yarn, whatever color that you're using for your Boston Terrier. And then you're just going to work single crochet all the way around and carry the blue yarn with you as you go. And then right before your yarn marker, you're going to skip, you're going to wait. You're going to stop about three stitches before your yarn marker and I'll show you how to change colors. So keep doing a single crochet with the white portion of the yarn all the way until you get to the last three stitches and then come back. Okay, so I'm almost to the yarn marker. I have three stitches left. So now I'm going to move the white yarn to the front and then I'm going to work with the blue yarn. So I'm going to go into the next stitch and behind the white yarn, pull up a loop with the blue yarn, then yarn over and go through both loops to change colors. And then I'm going to do single crochet in the rest of the stitches with the blue color. And then in the last blue stitch, I'm going to do one more blue color. And then I'm going to go ahead and change back to the white. So I'm going to move the blue yarn forward and then start working with the white yarn. And then I'm going to go ahead and do single crochet around with the white yarn, carrying the blue yarn with me as I work. And then you're going to do that all the way to the last white stitch and we're going to change color and do a blue stitch into that white stitch. So when I get to that point, come back and then I'll show you what to okay, do. Okay, so there. I'm back and I have the last white stitch. So I'm going to move the white yarn forward and start working with the blue. And then I'm going to put the blue color into that next stitch. And then I'm going to finish doing single crochet into each of the darker stitch, darker yarn. So the colors line up. So single crochet into every stitch. And we're going to be doing this for a total of nine rows. So we have a yarn marker in place to count our rows. And then in the last blue stitch, I'm going to go ahead and do a white color into that last stitch. So I'm going to bring the blue yarn forward, carry the white, and um, start working with the white yarn. Go into the next stitch, bring up the loop with the white yarn. And now I'm going to be working with the white yarn back around. And you're going to keep doing this pattern for nine rows, one single crochet in every stitch. So in this white stitch, you're going to change color and do blue and do blue all the way across until you get to the last blue stitch and then you're going to change to white and do a white stitch into that blue stitch. So go ahead and do that for nine rows 
and then come back and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so your work should look like this. And you should have finished nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now I'll go ahead and stuff your foot and then come back and I'll show you how to close. Okay, so once you've finished stuffing the foot, we're going to go ahead and do decrease rounds until you're closed. So you're going to go ahead and take the white yarn and you're going to bury the blue yarn. You're going to go in to the next stitch, bring up a loop, and then go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. And then you're going to yarn over and go through all three loops on the hook for a decrease stitch. And then you're just going to decrease all the way around. And at the same time, you're going to be burying the blue yarn. And then when I get to the last white stitch, I'm going to switch and start working with the blue yarn and then bury the white yarn. And then I'm just going to decrease in the blue area with the blue yarn. And then now I'm going to go ahead and just finish up decreasing with just one of the yarns. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the white yarn. And I'm going to finish up with the blue yarn. And I'm going to go ahead and just tie a knot. And then I'm just going to stuff the excess yarn in into the foot. And then just work with the blue yarn to finish my decreases around. And then once it gets too difficult to do the decreases around, then you can do skip a stitch and go into the next stitch and just do a slip stitch. So you're going to yarn over and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then you're just going to slip stitch it until you're closed all the way. And then once I'm closed I'm going to go ahead and finish off. So I'm going to yarn over and then just pull enough yarn to bury into your work. And then you're just going to get your tapestry needle and then you're just going to take your loose yarn end and go right through the center of the foot and then come out in the blue end. And then just cut it. And then we have one foot done. So now I'll go ahead and work a paw up to the point where you add the different color and then I'll show you how to put the color on the other side for your second forefoot. Okay, so you should have finished up to this point on your forepaw and I'm going to show you how to do, we did the color on this side and now I'm going to show you how to do the color on this side. But you can go ahead and with the back legs, you can see how all you do is just, once you change colors, you just keep using the um, same color. And I carried the white yarn up until 
about one, two, three, four, five rows, and then I did the rest, just the solid color, until I closed the leg. And you can see on this side, I just did more of the white rows before I joined and started doing the colored row to close. So you would do the, you can do the back paws yourself, and you can do the coloring however you like for the back feet, but they're made the same way. So now we're going to go ahead and join the different color. So you're going to go ahead and go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. And then you're going to take your color that you're using and you're going to bring it through the both loops. And then you're just going to do a single crochet. So you're going to yarn over, go through that loop, and then you're going to tie a knot. And so from now, you can go ahead and take your yarn marker and then move it up. And we're going to bury the blue yarn and work with the white yarn. So you go into the next stitch and bring up a loop with the white yarn. And then you're going to yarn over and go through both loops on the hook for a single crochet. And then you're going to do a single crochet all the way across the forefoot. and you're carrying the blue yarn as you go and then once you get past the end of the paw you're going to switch and move the white yarn to the front and then start working with the blue yarn I'm going to go into that next stitch and you're going to bring up a loop you have two loops on the hook yarn over and go through both and then you're going to start working single crochet into every stitch with the blue yarn. And I'm just going to do that for four stitches. So I'm going to, just, I'm going to do one more. And then I'm going to change and start working with the white yarn. I'm going to bring the blue yarn forward. Then I'm going to go into the next stitch, and then I'm just going to work with the white yarn. Just keep doing single crochet. All the way around. And you're going to be doing this again for nine rows. And I'm just going to show you how to change colors when you get back to the area. So then, on your last white stitch, you're going to go ahead and change back. Move the white yarn forward, and then I'm going to work with the blue. And you're going to do a blue stitch in that first, last white stitch before the change in color. And then you're going to do a single crochet in every blue stitch with the blue color and then in the last blue stitch you're going to change so you're going to do a white stitch into that blue stitch so you're going to alternate and change and start working with the white yarn move the blue yarn forward and then do the white single crochet with the white yarn. There. And you're going to keep doing that all the way around for nine rows. So when you get to that last white stitch, you're going to change colors and do a blue stitch. And then do blue all the way across to the last blue stitch. And then do a white stitch into that. And then just keep doing that for nine rows. And then come back. And then I'll show you how to close. 
Okay, so you should have finished nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you can see how the color are on opposite sides of the four feet, which is what you want. So now I'm just going to show you how to close it. Go ahead and stuff your foot and then come back and I'll show you how to make okay, the so decrease. So once you've stuffed your foot, then you're going to do your decrease rounds until it's closed. So you're going to do it the same way. You're just going to go into the next stitch and carry the blue yarn. Bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, and bring up a loop. Then yarn over and go through all three for a decrease. And you're just going to do that all the way around, except we're going to change colors when we get to the blue portion. So here, since I'm at the last white stitch, I'm going to go ahead and change colors. And I'm going to continue to do my decreases. And then on my last blue one, I have two loops on my hook, but I'm going to go ahead and start working. I'm going to move the blue yarn forward and start working with the white yarn. And then go into that next stitch. Bring up a loop with the white yarn. Yarn over and go through all three loops for a decrease. And then I'm going to go ahead and then just cut the white yarn. I'm just going to go ahead and finish working with the blue yarn. Make sure you tie a knot. And then you can just put the loose white yarn in into the foot and then you're just going to finish decreasing and slip stitching close like we did the other foot and then go ahead and make all four of your feet the way that I showed you except in the back legs you're going to do the color changes like this or whatever way that you want for your Boston Terrier and then come back and I'll show you how to sew the feet on Okay, so you should have all of your feet done, and I just wanted to show you the color pattern. So these are what I'm going to use for the front feet, and you can see the side color patterns. And then these are for the back, and you can see how I did more of the white pattern there and more blue on the back paw. So now just go ahead and get your tapestry needle with um, the dark colored thread and we're going to take the four feet and make sure that you have the color on the outside or wherever you want it placed and you're going to go halfway on the side and towards the front and the same thing with the other side make sure that they're even and placed along the sides of the front chest and then once you have it placed where you like the four feet to be you're just going to pinch them together and then take your tapestry needle and you're going to go in through the four feet to the other side and grab your tapestry needle and just leave enough on the other side because you're going to tie a knot with the excess and then you're going to go about a stitch over and back through to the other side about a stitch over from where you went in 
and then you're just going to puff out the chest about how you would like the front to be and then you're going to tie a knot and then you're going to go in one more time just to make sure it stays secure so you're going to do the same thing just pinch it together and then go back in to the other side and then go back to the other side where you started. And then just make sure that you puff out the chest. And then you can finish tying your knot. And then you're going to take your loose yarn end and you're going to bury it. So you're going to go in where you tied your knot and then come out from the inside of the foot and you're going to do that with both yarn ends just bury your yarn ends that way they won't come out easily alright so go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends and do the same thing for the back feet and then come back and I'll show you how to do the tail okay you should have your feet all sewed on you can see how nicely blueberry can stand up or you can just have blueberry sitting or whatever you've named your um, Boston Terrier but I love the way the feet can move so now we're going to do the tail okay so we're going to do a magic circle go ahead and drape the yarn across your four fingers and stabilize with your thumb and then just wrap around your two middle fingers twice and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb and I'm still using my um, G hook or four millimeter crochet hook just go under those two loops and bring up a loop and then yarn over and bring your yarn through that loop for your slip knot and then you're going to do six single crochet into the magic circle so you're going to bring up a loop yarn over and go through both loops on the hook for one single crochet two three four, five, and six. And then just take your forefinger and thumb and grab the base of those six single crochet and then you have your two yarn ends on the opposite end of your magic circle. You're going to pull on one and like I said if it doesn't pull you let go and pull on the other one but this one's pulling. So I'm going to close it not too tightly just enough to close this circle mostly. Grab the loose yarn end and pull on that you can always close it more later so now you're going to do two single crochet into every stitch around so in that first stitch you're going to grab both loops then you're going to bring up a loop two loops on your hook yarn over and go through both for a single crochet and you're going to do another single crochet in the same stitch so go ahead and do two single crochet all the way around for a total of 12 and then come back and I'll show you what to do next Okay, so now you can go ahead and turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end to close the magic circle. So see how that closed that nicely. And now you're just going to do two rows of one single crochet all the way around. So you can take your yarn marker and put it where you left off. And just do two rows of single crochet. One single crochet into every stitch all the way around one next stitch one so go ahead do one single crochet in every stitch around for two rows and then come back and I'll show you what to do next okay so you should have finished your two rows one two and now we're going to do a slip stitch so into the next stitch 
You're just going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to finish off, yarn over, just pull enough yarn to sew the tail onto the body. So now you just need your tapestry needle and you're going to sew the tail onto the back just like licorice. Here you can see where I sewed it. So right here you just sew it right in the center on the back with your tapestry needle. Okay, so you should have Blueberry's tail or your Boston Terrier's tail sewed on. You can see how I sewed my tail on. And now we're going to work on the collar. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is a slip knot. So how I do that is I just fold the yarn over on itself to make a loop. And then just take my crochet hook and then hold it stable with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. And now you're going to chain however large you want your collar. So I'm going to measure it around my um, dog. So one, two, three, four. So that's how you're going to chain yours for however long you want it. And then I'm going to come back and show you how long mine is. Okay, so I made a chain of 35, and you can see how mine fits just a little bit loosely. If you want yours a little tighter, you can do that as well, but I'm making mine a chain of 35. And then once you have your chain the length that you want it, you're going to hold on to that last stitch that you made, and you're going to chain three. One, two, Three. That's your first double crochet and now we're going to do a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook which is the stitch that you're holding. One, two, three, four. So we're going to work a double crochet into that stitch. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to go into the fourth stitch or chain from the hook and you're going to bring up a loop. Three loops on the hook yarn over and go through two and then yarn over and go through two. So now you have two double crochet completed. And we're going to do a double crochet all the way back to the beginning. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. So go ahead, finish doing double crochets all the way back to the beginning and then come back. Okay, so this is how your work should look. And now you're just going to take and put the collar around the neck of your Boston Terrier. And then we're going to slip stitch it into place. So you're going to go into that top stitch of the first double crochet. And then you're going to grab the yarn and pull it through both stitches on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to go ahead and yarn over and then finish off and just pull enough to bury into yarn to put bury into your work. And then you're going to get your tapestry needle and you're going to sew the bottom portion together. So once you have your tapestry needle on, you're going to take that bottom stitch of that first double crochet and you're going to sew the two bottom ends together. And then once you've sewn them together, you're going to take 
that loose yarn end and you can go ahead and bury it on the inside so you just weave your tapestry needle on the inside of the collar and then just cut the excess yarn so go ahead and bury all your loose yarn ends and then come back and then I'll show you how to put the name tag on okay so this is the name tag that I got for mine you don't have to use one of these but um, this is what I'm putting on mine so I'm going to show you if you did get one of these I'm going to show you how to put it on okay the first thing I'm going to do is a slip knot so I'm just going to fold this over into a loop and then put my crochet hook through the loop and then hold it in place with my middle finger and thumb and then I'm going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and pull it through the loop for a slip knot and then I'm just going to chain eight one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm just going to take and loop it through. And then also put it through the collar. And then I'm going to take, put my crochet hook back into the loop. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch into that first stitch on the chain. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the yarn and pull it through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. So go ahead and yarn over and pull through just enough yarn to bury the loose end into the work. And then I'm going to take the two yarn ends and then tie a knot. So go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends and then come back and I'll show you the finished okay, And part. then you have blueberries for your dog's name tag in place. Okay, so I just wanted to show you licorice and blueberry. And they're standing right now. And I'm just going to show you, you can also have them sit. And your Boston Terriers are all done. So licorice and blueberry.